talk about Thursday we're gonna talk about fault. Next week Tuesday, optional class so will just be a review session for the midterm, and then next week Thursday is gonna be the midterm. Gentlemen, a short view back to the past. <laughs> But before that, a quick word from my sponsor. Six Sigma Sim Racing is the number one Moza and Sim Magic dealer in North America, as well as a great value Sim Racing cockpit manufacturer. Learn more about them and enter this month's OC Racing giveaway of a Thrustmaster TH8A shifter down in the video description. And now back to the show. I, I mean video. The show sounds cooler, come on. Gentlemen, a short view back to the past. Man. Y'all killed me for this video. Now, let me explain. This was the whole point of the video, but before that, let's just say that I was not the cleanest of drivers either. And as you could imagine, I got hundreds of comments of people telling me everything I did wrong and everything I can improve upon, which number one, I really do appreciate because I am trying to improve on iRacing. So I've made a few changes. But before I get to that, I also got a ton of comments of people saying I should file a protest to get that driver banned as these types of actions are strictly prohibited on iRacing. Now me personally, I actually wasn't that upset about it. In fact, this was my live reaction. <laughs> but as the comments kept on rolling in, peer pressuring me to do it, my curiosity got the best of me and I did end up filing a protest where I shared a short description of what happened along with several video clips of the incident. A few days later, I got this email back from iRacing. Protest ticket resolved. Hi Oscar, once again would like to thank you for taking the time to submit your protest. This email is to inform you that the protest has been reviewed and the member under protest and the member under protest notified wait did they make a typo writing this email this email is to inform you that the protest has been reviewed and the member under protest notified of the outcome that makes no sense thank you for your continued support and good luck in your future races Okay, so... They didn't actually say what ended up happening. Did the driver get banned? Did he not get banned? Did he get temporarily banned? iRacing, I need to know this crucial information for my video. So ultimately, I had no choice but to take this matter into my own hands and do some investigating. I looked up my prior race history on iRacing. I found the race where this incident occurred, and I also found the profile of the driver who I filed a protest against. I then looked up that driver's recent race history, and this is what I found. As you can see, he was very active, racing about once to two times a day leading up to the race where this incident happened. After that race, he did two more, the last one being on the 28th, which is the same day I got the email from iRacing. And ever since then, he is yet to do another race. So, I think he got banned. Now it's obviously not a nice thing to see, but when people are spending literal hundreds of dollars to get the best multiplayer experience possible, I understand why iRacing takes such serious action against these types of behaviors, so I do have to give them credit for that. Anyways, I got tons and tons of recommendations to download different bits of software that are going to help me improve on not only my race awareness, but also just serve as a handy tool to have when you're racing. Of course, first and foremost, I'm talking about Crew Chief. Crew Chief is basically an in-game assistant that provides information about tire wear, fuel levels, lap times, and a bunch of other critical race data, all while even calling you by your name. I've also went ahead and downloaded a software called Race Lab. Race Lab provides clean, minimal, and easy to read overlays with great customization to fit all your needs. Most importantly for me, it offers a radar which is going to tell me when cars are in my blind spot. So with these two things, as well as taking into consideration all of the bits of information that you guys gave me, I'm going to jump into this week's GT4 race and hopefully put it all into practice. So let's get going. The track temp is 27, the air temp is 25 Celsius, 15 minutes. You'll need to get on with this. 
This week in the GT4 class, I'm racing in Road America, an exhilarating track loved by many, but one that I've never in my life felt comfortable in. Despite that, I had to leave my fears behind and concentrate on having a clean, safe, and close race with those ahead. Go, go, go! Okay, Oscar, 15 minutes left, that's 15 minutes. Starting P9 in a field of 23, I was doing alright. But as opposed to the last race, I wasn't going to be trying to be aggressive and climb up the field, but rather maintain my position while racing as safe as possible. Left side, clear left, left side. Still there. Still there. As you can see, the field was very much bunched up together and the various assists I downloaded were already paying dividends. Left. On your left. Still there. Clear left. Having safely completed the most dangerous part of the race, it was now time to get my head down and remain consistent, something which quickly started to pay off. However, I may have gotten a little distracted as I ended up making a big mistake of my own. There's an incident in Carousel. It looks like that car. Ah, uh, tires are cold. Car right. Clear right. Now I found the grass on this game to be literal ice, hence I had to remain gentle on the steering instead of quickly trying to correct and get back on track. Unfortunately I had lost some positions but all was not over yet as I was still very much in the midfield battle of this race. Starting lap 2, I was just about leading the midfield of this race and I had to stay on it as a large pack of cars were quickly approaching behind. The majority of this lap was uneventful although I was able to scoop up some positions back as others made mistakes. I found Road America to be an extremely unforgiving track, and paired with all of the cars that were quickly approaching from behind, I was really feeling the pressure. Eventually, the Mercedes was able to catch up, and knowing he was lapping faster than me, I gladly let him through. However, I knew I had to stick to his slipstream if I wanted any chance to not get swallowed by the pack behind. Come on, Oscar. Keep pushing. We might get him back. It's lap 3 and things are getting serious. We've got 10 minutes left, 10 minutes to go. PLO.
Okay, Oscar. Hold your nerve. Just keep it smooth. No mistakes. As you just saw, I lost a position and I really want it back. Me? Nani? Yeah, boy. Stay close, wait for him to make a mistake. Damn, y'all really thought I was onto something there, didn't you? <laughs> Watching it back, it all happened so quickly. I'm fastly approaching, coming into the corner much faster than the car up ahead, and in the blink of an eye, he taps the brakes and moves onto my line, forcing me to the left, where I steer a tiny bit off track, tires touch the grass, and it's game over for me. Now in hindsight, I should have either slowed down or not turned so far to the left, but in the heat of the moment, it's one of those things that happen in literal milliseconds. Thankfully, I didn't take anyone else out except for myself, and just like that, my race was practically over. All of the cars behind passed, and I went from an exhilarating three-car battle to plumb last and all alone in the back in a literal flash. I eventually went on to slowly and surely see the checkered flag, where I ultimately came in 17th and earned myself a significant drop in eye rating, but at least a measly increase in my safety rating. An unfortunate result, but I do think I significantly improved racing side by side, especially compared to my last race. As always, thank you all for watching, stay safe, and have a fantastic rest of your day. Ow. Ow.